dropping this and, and flipping this over and dropping the god rare on people was just like really really fun What's up guys, this is a this is the most bootleg deck profile I've ever done, but I'm working with what I have. I'm on a family vacation right now and I don't have a phone stand, but I have my deck. And this is what I played in Arlington. I wanted to show you guys because um, I have a little bit of different take on this leader, which um, this is the leader that I played. It's a U7 Goku, Supreme Super Coup as I like to call him. Um, I think this is one of the most interesting leaders that's ever been made in this game. Anytime leaders have a different uh, mechanic that under which they function and they're viable. Oftentimes they see a place in the meta for a long time. So I could see this guy sticking around. Um, I think a lot of people are building him as an aggro deck since he's red and the deck does have a lot of aggro potential, but I think this deck is really a control deck in disguise, um, especially the way that I built it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go through the cards and talk about how I put the list together and my thoughts on it. Also, sorry, these are not in my sleeves, but these are the, the sleeves that you'll get if you go to Card Fest. They're, they're really nice. I actually might start using them. They feel really good and I like the art a lot. Lot. they're like shiny and subtle really really cool cards just to go through like the basics there's like you know just the staples the four android 17 um all the one drop cards that are uh that play when you have sparking in the limit it, they're really really strong they're good for the deck there's no reason to not play them this guy basically once you have five u7 in the drop and you have seven cards in your drop which you'll have by turn two you can pay one energy play him swing for a 15k double strike and you get to search top three for universe seven which is kind of wild because you can grab super combos and your secret rare with this guy which is like really really wild but um really good searcher good early pressure and a good way to also just pressure unisons the uh the next one drop is this uh this one drop frieza which is really great because uh he gives minus 15k to something when he comes into play same concept limit one you can pay one energy and uh, bring him into play he negs something by minus 15k and then he's a 19k dual attack so also again just like good for dealing pressure um another thing that's great to do with this card is if you want to get something bigger off the board if there's like a 30k or something that's like 25 you can play this dude neg it by 15 and then you can actually just hard cast the counterplay this is the uh, goku counterplay i think this is borderline the best card in the deck um I, there's no reason to not run forward this card it's so so strong just on turn you can just play it for one energy and neg something by 15 so if you have a bigger body you neg it with frieza and then you neg it with this you actually also get to draw a card what's crazy about this card is we'll get into the unison plays later but since you uh when you play when a card is played there's two counter windows when a card is played off a skill you can actually hit the card in counter window one with this and then you can hit it in counter window two with videl so something that's like if a card is 35 you can counter window one hit it with goku counter window two hit it with videl and the crazy thing about these cards is they actually hit cards with the flex since their neg is on the auto so after the card uh, counter play just as play these cards they can get hit by um like things that slot floodgates like vegeta resolve renewed or something that um is going to force this to go to the drop area but if these hit the board the neg is on the auto so it'll still hit stuff with deflect uh which is really strong so you can counter window one play goku counter window two play videl if you have a unison in play so really really good card defensively and offensively um it's great to float energy in this deck even if you don't have this card in hand because this card is just so strong it's going to force people to play around it uh really really strong card and then it's just a free 19k swing as well there's no reason to not play this super combo it's u7 um it is a 10k you'll have it live on turn two every single time um and early game you're fine comboing to protect your life one of the things about this leader is it can awaken at eight life even and that's not a disadvantage because you don't need to take any life when you awaken and you could just stay at high life and play a very defensive game which is one of the reasons why i think this is actually like a control deck in disguise but um the other thing about this deck is comboing off earlier also sets up your sparking and it sets you up to play things that require you seven in the drop so throwing one of these guys off early game is really not a big deal and you're just filtering your deck and drawing cards um yeah really good super combo and it's searchable with the gohan and it's searchable with 17. i know a lot of people are really hyped on this card i have one in here and i barely ever play it, it may just not be my play style i think two is a pretty big investment um it's also why i don't play divine presence in this list i have it in the side but i'll talk about that when i get there it is good to pay two energy and draw a card the neg barrier is strong but it's kind of situational and i think this card is probably just going to be a two of in my sideboard moving forward i want to make room for some other stuff but i'll talk about that and 
then to go into the skillless package. I know a lot of people aren't really like into the skillless package in this deck, but there's no reason to not run Gohan. Gohan is just searches your super combos. He looks through top five. You can grab a 17, you can grab a Goku, you can grab so many different targets in this deck and grab a skillless. And what's really great about him is if you open into Gohan, and you manage to find a skillless off his search and you have a challenger in hand, which I'll get into, you're basically setting yourself up to play all your one energy plays on turn two. And late game, you're also just setting yourself up to continue filtering your deck and getting more cards in hand. So Gohan is really, really strong. A lot of people say, oh, like Gohan doesn't stick and the skillless package feels wasted in my hand, but it can be potentially, but it really isn't because um, they're always just gonna be more U7s in your drop. And the more cards that are put in your drop, the faster, the, the faster you can play your secret rare and the faster you can play your eight drop. So um, turn four, turn five to be set up to play those is always a threat that your opponent's gonna need to play around making them play suboptimally and that's gonna help you gain advantage over the course of the game. So Gohan's really great. If you guys don't know what this card does, basically when he's in play, when you combo a skillless card once per turn, you can offensively or defensively, you get to draw a card. So with Gohan comes a skillless package. There's four of these Gokus, I think there's art is just so cool i'm so hyped on this art there's one super saiyan gohan or one super saiyan goku and then i put two of the vegetas i don't like the vegeta art quite as much i might put piccolo in but i don't know he looks better than piccolo i just think he looks kind of stupid but this goku is so tough so uh seven skillless it's universe seven seven dragon balls that's why i run seven um it also is it's a seven four split with the with the skillless and the challengers so basically when you have gohan in your battle area um and you combo a skillless you get to draw a card. So if somebody, if you play Gohan turn one, somebody swings into your life, they're gonna need to swing for 15K. Yeah, 15 to get it to go through because if you have a skillless in hand, you're just gonna block it and keep protecting your life. And if you happen to have a skillless and a challenger on their turn one, when they swing, it's totally fine to combo a Goku and combo a challenger. Cause all that's gonna do is gonna draw you two cards, which is very strong. And it's putting two U7s in your drop area, which sets you up to play your one energy plays the next turn. So for the challengers, it's just two and two. I just, you know, I like, I like themes and decks. So I thought it was cool to have two 17s and two 18s. I, you never really play these or hard cast them, I, I guess potentially you could but um i think they're a lot stronger just to have for the combo potential um and even late game if you don't have a gohan on board and you have a skillless and a challenger it's still really strong to combo skillless combo challenger draw a card and then continue comboing for your late game combos the unison i chose to main board is sin shenron i'm playing four um going forward i'm going to change this to a three three split with sin and jiren there's a couple things that i'm going to cut but i think six unisons is good there's a lot of cards in the deck and you really want to see a unison by turn three. Since Shenron was just kind of a meta call, um, I figured like he's good for dealing with stuff against Pic King Piccolo. He's good for just board clearing. Uh, Mecha Frieza, he's super, super strong because they can't set up their board on your turn. You can just neg it and kill whatever so they can't get their untap effect. But um, it's really situational. Like against Blue, Jiren is just better. It's actually why I think I lost against Henry was I chose to side in Sin for whatever reason. I didn't think about the fact that Boo's just going to put so much pressure and kill him. I was thinking I'd look at his hand more and rip out his three drops but um Jiren definitely would have been the right call but to have that versatility uh within the deck without having to worry about what your siding options are i think it's just stronger so i think a three three split uh sin Jiren is going to be the way that i go moving forward um but really strong effects you know minusing board and then you being having hand knowledge allows you to make informed decisions about how you're going to push for game a lot more effectively so oftentimes turn four i'll just minus two check out their hand see if it's safe for me to go in with the a drop or with my secret rare and then play um around that respectively. So that's my unison choice. You're playing red unisons. There's no reason not to play King Piccolo, a new ruler. He's just a free play, free play, 20K double strike. Great at just dealing that extra pressure, especially in this deck, since you can't overwhelm any option to play a card that doesn't require energy is really, really valuable. So super, super valuable card. And then three Videl, uh, this card is insane. This is like such a wild counterplay. It's like Yamcha on double legs. Basically uh, you can play at counter window two. When it comes into play, it negs two things by 20K on the auto. So it also hits stuff with deflect, as I was saying. And if you have a Goku counter play in hand, you just counter window one Goku, counter window two Videl, and just uh, rock their board. Really, really super strong card. And it's an SPR, so nice, pretty card for the deck. What's really cool about this deck is you can run four secret rares. Uh, this card is 
basically a secret rare. Uh, super, super strong. I would say this is the strongest four drop in the game. It's slightly limited because you need Sparking 20. There's not a ton of red decks that have Sparking 20 all the time, but even still, um, it's just really, really, really strong. You play it, it negs the board by 35K. When you swing, it's double strike, dual attack, and uh, you can look at your opponent's hand, rip, rip a card out of it, choose something from their hand, energy cost seven or less, which is just kind of wild. Um, so like board clear, hand knowledge, double strike, dual attack, 35K, deflect, just super, super strong card. But again, if you're playing in the mirror and you have like a uh, Goku and a Videl in hand, you can actually just kill this thing on play. Jiren is so, so strong in this mirror match because when they play this, you can neg it by 10. Then you can, you know, do your counterplay stuff, whatever, just continue. It's it's possible to kill this guy on play. So it's not always a safe play, but if you have hand knowledge, you you, you know use Sinchenron to see what is going on. There are safe ways to play this card, and it's definitely a strong finisher um, when you have the opening to finish with it. Vegeta Resolve Renewed is broken. This card is absolutely insane. There is no red deck that shouldn't be playing this right now. Uh, just stopping floodgates uh, is so necessary, and you want people to invest in floodgates. So if you have this answer in hand and you see the floodgate in their hand grab a super combo let them play the floodgate and hit it with resolve renewed because they are negging when they play that that uh floodgate and all the floodgates have to hit the board in order to come into play so anything that's like a three drop he just like hits it and it just goes to the bottom of the or it goes to the drop he's also good for hitting videl and the goku so they don't hit the board um if they're trying to neg one of your cards so good to keep an energy open for him if you see what's going on in their hand koizuka is just like too easy to play in this deck he's like a free pitch off your leader effect so you just pitch him and anytime that you think that they're going to be playing stuff on your turn like against king piccolo this guy's king they just are going to neg their hand so much if he's uh, been activated. So for my negates, I'm running 2k VIP. I would consider even going to three. I think this card's really good, but I'm just running a 2 2 split with KVIP and Violent Rays. I have the third Violent Rays in the side. There's certain decks that Violent Rays just buys you that turn, but these negates kind of are what make this deck a control deck in a sense. So these negates buy you turns, and this deck gets so much stronger with the more energy you have because you can play these bombs and respond to things that people are going to do to stop your bombs. So having these cards to buy you turn four turn five and go into turn six turn seven and play this actually as a control deck gives you so much more potential and how you can push and gives you the time in the game to slowly outgrind your opponent's resources with how much pressure you can apply with all the cards that only cost one energy uh so these cards are really essential and depending on the matchup i'm probably going to put one more of each in the side and then choose how i you know how i do that negate split depending on the matchup after image is just king this card is way too good in this deck uh you always have access to it on turn two you can protect your androids you can protect your unison you can there's just there's so much you can do with this card you can counterplay something neg it and kill it like it's just so so insanely good uh it's so versatile and so useful in this deck and it's a mandatory four of there's no reason to not be playing four of this card it's just free protection gives you access to your life when people aren't hitting your life very very useful card i'm playing two realm of the god ultra instinct this card is kind of wild um i didn't play it that much i might cut it to one but uh one of the guys i was hanging out with um told me about this tech about playing heartfelt heartfelt plea on awakening so you play the 17 or uh frieza swing with it give it a realm boost and then you awaken kill it and play heartfelt because it becomes a 25k over 25k uh red battle card and I am for sure gonna try that. What's gonna come out? Uh, this 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 card's gonna come out. This card's actually kind of crap. Um, I put this in here. I, it got me a game in the online regional, and um, I thought like it was cool. But it's just so situational, and in pre sided format, it came out every single time. So I'm just gonna take this out and put a heartfelt in, and see if I can run that tech. Um, but in theory, this is good. It, like it can get games, but it's just too situational. Um, for that, and of course you guys kind of probably saw this over here because I can't see the camera, the secret rare. Best secret rare for red right now. Uh, closing in on the best secret rare in the game, I think. Um, Hatch definitely is still really, really, really good, but board clear and a potential to 7-0 is board clear including unison clear and a life crit uh with the fleck and a potential 7-0 is just like it's too crazy this card is so so insanely strong um if you're playing any red deck honestly this is the secret rare you should be playing you just slam this guy down for four so many instances when you just win the game because he came out um so yeah no no reason to not 
play this dude. He is so insanely strong. All right, and then for the sideboard, I got four gear in here. Three of these are gonna go in the main and um, I'll you know change up my ratios about things. Probably won't continue doing the unison side thing, just put three and three and then just have those options uh, matchup dependent. Jiren's just so good. When they play something, you can minus 10. You know, against Boo Unison, he puts in so much more work because they have to combo up in order to hit him, and he's just negging it on play, and then you just kill it the next turn because he's double strike, and then you have so much double strike pressure in the deck. Divine Presence is all right. Um, I played it once the whole tournament, and I'm pretty sure it cost me the game for investing in him. Two energy is a lot to tap in this deck for something that isn't guaranteed to gain you a lot Lot of value. The good thing about him is that he can search you a skillless, which is nice. And you know, he is good at dealing with certain things, but he's gonna get cut. I, I don't, I think he's actually kind of like the worst card in the deck. It's cool because he's U7 and you can combo him off, but I, I don't think that he actually has a place. Um, two Broly Crown might go to three. Really just insanely good card against blue. Hand knowledge, again, hand knowledge is like key. The more you can see about your opponent's hand, the more you can, how you can decide on how you're gonna calculate your plays. Um, and if they want to counter play this guy, great. You got a counter play out of their hand. One Hidden Ambitions, uh, yeah, probably not gonna play this card. It, it, like it's cool against the mirror actually if they after image you can counterplay the after image um dimension magics you can potentially but a lot of people aren't like negating from life especially because life is just so valuable at this point so this card has become a lot more situational i might keep it in the side just for spice and if in the mirror i might side it in because i think it could be pretty funny to get somebody on an after image with this um but what's nice about it is it's a 5k it would be great if it was u7 but it's totally not a u7 card so probably gonna cut this um two strategies universe seven this card's really good and i just uh, it's for sin um this protects your eight drops from haze so it's a really good card to side in so they can't haze your uh eight drops i would probably actually put a third in the side and side in three in that matchup um and just cut like the kvips or something and just have rely on the violent rays super super good card though you just you play your eight drop and then immediately give a barrier for free really really useful and this also uh helps your sparking so like if you need that last card for sparking play your eight drop you play your secret rare whatever give it uh strategies and then you can swing with it and they can't haze it uh one more quotes of kind of side probably go to two just great card uh, a lot of matchups you want to have you really really want to see this card uh one more of these in the side I, I guess the two are going to come out to the side there are matchups where this card is really good but i just see it not getting in there and more and i feel like there's more things that add versatility to the deck. And then last, just one more Violent Rays and one Wolfang. Wolfang came in in a lot of games, so I might actually just move it to the main, but um, Violent Rays is just such a insanely strong card. And again, it just buys you more turns. So you can play that control game because the control game really, I think is the key to this deck. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is, a, this is a control deck in disguise. So I had a blast playing this deck, like dropping this and, and flipping this over and dropping the God Rare on people was just like really, really fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing with everybody in Texas. Lots of really, really good inter interactions, fun matchups. I think it was a great event. I think that there are a lot we can learn from it. And I think these events will continue to get better. But at the end of the day, it's cool that we just get to do this stuff in person again. I love this leader. I think it's so cool. I, I'm probably gonna be playing this guy for a while. I think he'll continue to get supported. And um, I think there's just a lot of room for versatility in this deck. It's like it's like a more balanced VEGX, basically. It's just, you know, a lot, a lot really, really strong. Um, and I don't think anybody really has this leader cracked. So I'm gonna continue working on it. I'll update uh, deck profiles. When I get back and actually have my setup, I'll do like a little playthrough for you guys. But for anybody that's going to Card Fest in uh, Miami, I will be there on Sunday commentating. And if you wanna play this guy, I'd highly recommend trying this list out, um, running it. I'll post a link to my DBS decks deck list for this uh in the description so if you want to just see that deck list you can see that as well i am a dentist i can't end without giving you a dental tooth tip so my dental tooth tip would be um it, it is important to brush your teeth in the morning i know a lot of people don't like to brush their teeth in the morning or just don't want to or they're too lazy or whatever but it's not that hard to uh just grab a toothbrush and even just wipe your teeth off because what you need to get off your teeth is this thing called a pellicle when the pellicle is wiped off, then stuff doesn't stick to your teeth more easily throughout the day. So just like wipe off that initial layer. It's great if you can brush with some toothpaste, but even if you just get a toothbrush in there and just wipe your teeth off, or even, I mean, worst case scenario, just grab like a towel and just like wipe your teeth off. It's better than nothing in the morning because you have this buildup on your teeth that forms overnight and stuff sticks to it more easily and then you get more problems over time. But brush twice a day, two minutes, get a solid care, power brush and pro enamel is the toothpaste I recommend. Anyways, thanks for coming to check it out. I will see you all in the next one. Better uh, video quality and all that stuff.
Take me home, dragon balls, to my monster cuddle. I do draw too many monster cuddle, and I and I take country road. I shuffle my deck and I top deck all my monsters, and then I do draw. And I play my Yuri song. I make a ten, and my children is double strike. Once again, once again. Thank you so much, my best of friend.